Hey, what's up guys? Cotton here. I started doing a lot of flying lately, so I wanted to kind of share some of the finer points with you. Now, the first thing I want to recommend is that you do not make your regular infantry a pilot. As you can see, I've already made that mistake in the past. I have some dogfighting and bombing and all that on him, but it's really annoying. It's much better to have a dedicated pilot. Level 4 is not that bad of a grind. I recently ground this guy and, you know, it took me a few hours in the morning. Alright, so once you get your infantry to level 4, you're going to be able to transfer him over to a pilot. He comes stock with his own little MP34, and the plane comes with him too. You don't have to buy that, which is nice. There's three kinds of ammo here. By factory default, it's going to come with the regular armor piercing. It's just all around rounds. Now up here, the 15 AP composite, these are incendiary rounds. They're very, very good at taking down enemy planes, but they're pretty much garbage for everything else. The high explosive rounds are just like they sound. They're packed with more explosives than the regular stock rounds. Now I really like these. They make taking out ground troops incredibly easy as well as pilots and I'll go over that a little bit later in the video. Alright now obviously when you first start flying you won't have any badges but these are the two you're gonna want. These are the only useful ones for a pilot. Flak jacket which is basically body armor for him. It protects him more from bullets of other planes and ground fire, AA cannons, things like that. And bombs away lets you hold more bombs. This one is especially good for Axis because by default, the BF-109, it only has one bomb attached to the bottom. So you're gonna have to bomb and then wait for the full reloading cycle before you can get another bomb in. So uh, Bronze lets you bring one, I believe silver is two, yeah, and gold is three. It does take a while to level it up. It's not so bad getting to bronze. Um, getting to silver is a bit of a grind. Getting to gold, of course, is ridiculous. Same thing for the flak jacket, but these, I highly recommend these over any other badges for pilot. I mean, there are some other pilot-related badges, but like this one, it's faster start up on planes. There's only really one map where this is useful, and that's the airport, because you spawn on the ground any other map you already spawn in the air so you don't really need to start up your plane and aircraft thief it's so rare because nobody really steals airplanes nobody really lands airplanes and leaves them long enough to get stolen let alone do you want to waste a badge slot to steal it faster so again flak jacket and bombs away is just the way to go alright guys I want to get into the basic controls because a lot of people think the plane just has stop go and that's not true it actually has five different speeds you can fly right now I'm going full speed as you can hear now tapping S once will lower it to gear as you can hear the plane gets a little softer but you're still at a nice speed you're keeping pace you're definitely not descending tapping S again once again you hear the plane's engine dull down a bit and you're still gliding you're still not descending so this is a good pace to keep for maybe gunning or bombing. Pressing it again will take the plane down even lower and you will start to descend at this speed but it'll slow you down so you can aim your bombs and everything. Tapping S one more time will bring you into the full blown stall where the engine's basically just in neutral and I'm descending. So gas pull up. Now A and D is your back rudder. It'll help you turn the plane left and right. Alright, so now for some turning, because it's very important to be able to maneuver. I like an old school Star Fox when you fly off the edge of the map. If you pull your plane straight up until you see the horizon, then hold your F key to auto level out, and you've done a complete 180 and you've gained altitude for bombing. Now the opposite works too. If you don't need altitude, dive the plane down while holding F and you'll auto level and get closer to the ground for gunning or something like that. You can also just turn the plane left, use your rudder too, even slow it down if you need to cover less ground. And now you can also use what's called the debug controls. You can do this by holding control and shift and your mouse will become kind of free look but your mouse will become the control for your rudder. Now W and S will become the mouse. Holding S will make you turn back, and holding W will make you dive forward. And A and D will actually roll the plane now instead of turning the rudder. So 
So a lot of people use this to pull off some crazy little maneuvers. You see right there, I used my shift key to see where that bomb landed. This is very, very useful. Shift turns your mouse into the camera, basically. You can still steer the plane a bit with your keyboard, but the mouse just becomes the camera. But still, very good to see if anyone's chasing you down, or just like I did there, trying to see where a bomb lands. Maybe I needed to aim higher or lower. At least I can see where it hit, so I know where I can improve. Now, when I'm free flying, I like to just fly in third person. You can see more. But when it's time to start gunning or bombing, I'll slow down and go to first person. The crosshair is used for your machine guns. Left click is a basic machine gun, similar to what you'll find on tanks and mounted weapons. It's really useful, it never seems to run out, but it's also very weak. Your right click is going to be whatever custom ammunition you chose for your cannons that are on your wings. I use high explosive rounds, so they're really good for picking off infantry that are just running on the ground. Here's one over here. Oh, that pilot took it. And spacebar will drop your bombs. Now, bombing is a bit different because you don't. You want to use your crosshair for a left and right alignment, but you want to aim well beneath the crosshair because your bomb is located beneath the plane. See, to hit that jeep, I aimed about an inch or two above it. Now there is no exact way I can tell you to aim the bombs because it just depends on the angle you're coming at, the speed. And as you'll see now my plane says resupplying. That's because I've burned out either all of my bombs or all of my cannon ammunition or both. Your plane will start to reload. Now this can be useful if you time it right. Like for instance, I only have 59 high explosive rounds left. It'd be nice to try to use those before this percentage timer runs out. So that way they'll get a refill as well. And vice versa, if you're almost out of bombs or whatever, maybe run out the last bit of your ammunition just to start the refill early. Right there is why I like high explosive rounds. It's very easy to shoot pilots out of the plane. You don't have to waste the ammo to shoot down the entire plane. And at the same time, this ammo is extremely good for picking off infantry, which will help you level your flak jacket a lot quicker. And if you ever find yourself being chased down by enemy planes, it's important to do what you can. Try not to get hit. Swerve a lot, dodge a lot. Possibly try a flip or a barrel roll, but try not to expose your cockpit too much. But as you'll see right here, I slow down as slow as I can, and I pull down. I'm just hoping that these guys were higher up than me, that way they're forced to pass me, because they're going faster. Now I can give chase when I speed back up. And don't be afraid if you're ever on a map where there's not a lot of ground troops, and it seems like points aren't being captured, go ahead and land your plane. Just make sure you slow it down real easy, bring it down real slow, wait for the wheels to come down, and you're good. And I did want to express one point of warning to you. It is possible for you to bomb yourself. If you're too close to the ground when the bomb hits, you will take damage from it. Now I'm on fire. So again, just use caution when bombing. Make sure that you're high enough off the ground. I recommend at least 40, 50 meters. Otherwise, you risk the splash. 